I was looking at them. It was my fault. So good morning, church. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Brooke Wilkerson, one of the pastors here at Desert Skies. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this worship service together. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary and those joining online, so glad you are here with us today. I would also like to introduce our lay leader, Ken Winkleman, and our liturgist, Chris Weber, this morning. Please let us know that you are here as well. You can click the connection button online or find your connection card in your bulletin and let us know that you are here. 
I encourage you to find a way to get involved in 2024 if you uh, are not or not sufficiently or you'd like to change what you're doing at Desert Skies. There's music groups, there's discipleship groups, there's a prayer list for those of you that are remote you can still get involved. You can get the, the prayer email, spend some time in daily prayer for Desert Skies. You could uh, write cards or call people. Of course, we always need our committees uh, full of enthusiastic people. So think about it. Uh, talk with me or Pastor Susan or one of the lay leaders or call the church office. Speaking of getting involved, the flea market is coming up and we're looking for volunteers. The first uh, is a specific category of volunteers for food prep and serving and sales. Your information session will include food for you. Uh, and that is a lunch and info session on October 12th. The overall flea market info session and lunch is October 23rd. I don't see anyone frantically writing it down, but that's okay because it is in the weekly email. So check your skyline for more information on that and much more. Finally, it is World Communion Sunday, which is one of our six special Sundays across our United Methodist Connection. We uh, are, are gathering at the table together with United Methodists, and you know what? We even have Christian siblings that are not Methodist. Did you know that? We do, and they're gathering uh, with us this morning at the global table of Jesus Christ as well. Uh, we have breads from different cultures and places uh, this morning on our altar table, and uh, they're still packaged so that they're still usable, and tomorrow they will go to Sister Jose. Okay, that was a lot. Was it a lot? I don't know about you, if you've been up for hours, some of you have told me you've been up for hours, some of you just barely make it. Either way, you are most welcome, and I invite you to take a deep breath and just, you're here. You're welcome. Let's worship together. And friends, this morning I greet you with heartiest greetings of joy in Jesus Christ. Today we conclude our worship series, Come to the Table on World Communion Sunday. This day is a global celebration of a sacred ritual that helps us remember Jesus' life and ministry and connects us with our Christian ancestors and siblings across time and space. There is great joy to be found at God's table. Joy in the vibrant relationships that nurture and sustain this community. Joy in the sharing of our gifts and resources. Joy in the journey as we work toward a more just and equitable world. Let us take a moment to center ourselves in this space and open ourselves to joy. Let us pray. God, we know we have been in your presence all week. The times that we remembered and were mindful of it and the times that we were not mindful of it. Perhaps forgot that you are ever present. This morning, we are gathered intentionally in your presence and the presence of one another. We are gathered even by your mystical spirit with those near and far on this World Communion Sunday. We ask that you meet each of us this morning with whatever it is we need in this journey of life and faith, with comfort, with challenge, 
with joy. Receive our prayers and praise this morning through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand in body and or in spirit and remain standing for the opening hymn. <clears throat> we hear God's calling to have joyful spirits as Christ's followers. We lift our hearts to be filled with vim and vigor. We know that sometimes it's difficult to be joyful in our life. We recognize that joy is not a happy we open ourselves to the joy that comes with justice. may be seated and junior high uh, can go to Sunday school. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God, we pray for the church that we will become more and more like Jesus and that we will grow together in unity in the spirit. Help us to look not only on our own interests, but to be mindful of others and to act with empathy and care. Help us to live out our salvation, even when it is difficult to humble ourselves and live in love for God and for others. Jesus, we remember that you chose to be born a human on this earth. You walked on the soil, breathed the air, quenched your thirst with water, 
enjoyed the beauty and the bounty of the natural world. Help us to care for the earth and to share it well with humankind and other species around the globe. May our habits and decisions honor God as creator, Jesus as exemplary human, and the spirit whose fellowship we share with so many others. Jesus became obedient to death so that we may have abundant life. We pray now for all who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit this day. We pray for broken relationships and anyone suffering rejection or loneliness. We pray for all caught in addiction. Bring your healing presence and your comforting love real to all who need it. We give thanks for your faithfulness to us, God, and for the steadfastness of your mercy. Renew your call on our lives and help us to find joy in obedience as Jesus did. And we continue in prayer now together with the prayers that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We celebrate our common communion table with people all over the world. Through Jesus, we are brought together, and no matter how we got there, believing in the host of this table makes our joy complete. Let us share our stories, our compassion, our sympathy as part of one human family that shares the love of Christ in the breaking of the bread. Hear now the scripture from the second chapter of the letter to the Philippians that was written by the Apostle Paul while he was in prison, followed by a remembrance of what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. Imagine those early Christian Philippians gathered at a table, reading these words to one another and remembering the words of Jesus. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beating beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the sovereign. 
What I'm getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God is willing and working at what will give the most pleasure. Do you remember the story Jesus told to his disciples about the two sons who were asked to work in their father's vineyard? A man had two sons. He went up to the first and said, son, go out for the day and work in the vineyard. The son answered, I don't want to. Later on, he thought better and went. The father gave the same command to the second son. He answered, sure, glad to, but he never went. So Jesus asked, which of the two sons did what the father asked? The disciples said, the first. Jesus said, yes, and I tell you that crooks and outcasts are going to precede you into God's kingdom. John came to you showing you the right road. You turned up your noses at him, but the crooks and outcasts believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe him. Hear, hear.
Well, thank you, Ringers, for a different rendition of that song than I had ever heard uh, before today. It's most traditionally done in Zulu with a djembe drum. A good selection for our World Communion Sunday, showing that we share many things across cultures and we enculturate things. We, we borrow from other places, other people, the gifts of other places, and we enculturate them in ways uh, that, that reflect who we are here. You'll maybe have a little bit more of a sense when you get to sing it as you're closing hymn. Uh, so I invite you now to practice a little bit. So you can repeat after me. Sia humba. Kuken yene. Quenquos. Sia humba kuken yene quenquos. Sia humba kuken yene quenquos. You're going to get it, okay? You are. The, the choir is even saying no. The choir needs help. So that's y'all. That wasn't why I taught them, but y'all are admitting you need some help. So it is, after all, the congregational closing hymn. So you have something to be excited about, looking forward to in this service. Today, we wrap up our Come to the Table series with the Table of Joy. I thought a lot about joy this week in preparation for this service, and I'm going to share some of what I thought about with you. When was the last time you contemplated joy? It's actually a little hard to capture or define, at least it was for me this week. It's elusive and hard to put words to. Maybe it's one of those things you know when you see it or experience it, even if you can't articulate it. At the same time, it's not that narrow, I don't think. Joy comes in many ways and several forms. There's not just one way to have joy. Joy is not the same as pleasure or contentment or happiness. But joy often has elements of each of these. Joy is not dependent on external circumstances. It's an internal way of being. A choice to be grounded in what's right and true and satisfying. Joy is perhaps both a result of a life of faith and a motivator for pursuing a life of faith. We have joy, so we naturally live out a life of faith and practice. We live a faithful life, which results in joy. It seems to me we can jump on this virtuous circle at any point. We may have an experience of joy that helps us embody the other fruits of the Spirit as well. Love, patience, kindness, self-control, and the others, a life oriented to Jesus Christ. Or we may jump into practicing faith and find that joy comes along with it, or at least it can, and it should. If you're skeptical that a life of faith brings joy, or if you've lost the joy that comes with faith, I have a few thoughts or suggestions First service, when I said that, I was looking at the choir, and so they made me think of music. I said, I imagine they are in the choir or the bell choir because of the joy they find in music together. Music is an avenue of joy for many, and I encourage you to enjoy that, whether it's participating or listening or um, receiving, uh, even, if, even if you're not hearing it, if you can receive a, a, a rhythm in your body. And I have a few other thoughts and suggestions that were not in the moment at the 830 service. Pray. Ask God to help you discover or rediscover joy. Invest in positive, uplifting community. Practice gratitude and generosity. 
look for or listen to others about how they find joy and share it. When I started that list in my notes, I didn't have our baptismal affirmations in mind, but when I looked at that list, I realized it's right in line with what we say we will do together at baptism. Offer and receive prayers, presents, gifts, service, and witness. Eventually, y'all are going to say that with me when I say it out loud. Where can you look at that for reference? Yes, thank you. That was what I was looking for. Somebody the first service said the book of discipline. So Methodist at the 830 service. <laughs> On the back of your name tag, prayers, presents, gifts, service, and witness. This come to the table series has demonstrated that we don't pursue Christian faith and practice out of negative motivators like duty or guilt or obligation, but because we're drawn and strengthened by positive motivators, the hospitality, love, peace, grace, and joy that God gives and invites us to be part of. Duty or guilt or obligation only go so far, and they do not lead to the kind of life God has for us. Like we saw in a different of Paul's a few weeks ago in this series, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking according to rules and duty, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, in our scripture passages for today, there's not a lot about joy. But Paul indicates his joy will be made complete only in community. For joy to be complete requires relationship. And I would say the best ways to experience community and the joy found in relationships are in person, or at least personally. If you join us online, I really encourage you to reach out to us more personally. Come to something in person soon if you can, or give us a call or send me an email. If you'd like a visit from a pastor or a member of our congregational care team, let us know. World Communion Sunday reminds us we are at our best when we find some kind of unity or relationship with diverse others, not just with others very much like us, but diverse others. If your circles are not very diverse, I encourage you to try something or somewhere new. If you try a new activity, you may meet different kinds of people. If you go somewhere you haven't frequented before, there may be a different kind of community gathered there. You may have an opportunity to have a conversation or hear an accent or encounter a perspective that you have not heard or experienced much before. One of the things we might get out of our gospel reading for today is that the proof is in the pudding. Or joy comes in the doing, not the speaking or the seeking. The second son shows that speaking is insufficient. He says he'll go out and work in the field, but then he does not. And I imagine then he does not share in the fullness of his father's joy, the joy he could have had. As for the seeking, in the first part of his autobiographical book, Surprised by Joy, C.S. Lewis seeks joy, but eventually realizes the desire for joy can never be satiated. We always want more, which is part of what makes joy so compelling, so great. So he concludes that the convert is not defined by seeking, but by doing. We might say that it's in the life of faith and action 
that the joy of Christ materializes. In contemplating joy this week, I thought about how other people or cultures might talk about joy, appropriate for World Communion Sunday. My African friends might say joy comes when we are in right relationship with God, one another, ourselves, and creation. African cultures tend to view the world as very connected. All the pieces are related, and living in harmony with all things is the good life. I think there are some takeaways here for us, too. Some questions to contemplate. How do I honor and enjoy God? Enjoying God may be part of another tradition's catechism, but isn't that what faith should be about? A relationship with God that honors God and ourselves and brings joy all around? How do I honor and enjoy my body? myself, my life. Not fleeting pleasures, but living every day in such a way that I'm poised to live my best life and indeed already am. Thinking along these lines this week helped me reevaluate. So my day off to-do list included getting some exercise, cleaning up the house a bit, and making that dentist appointment in addition to some downtime and relaxation and connecting with friends. Self-care looks a range of ways, and all are important. It can't always be ice cream and a few episodes of the current series I'm into, but it also can't always be chores. Sometimes honoring ourselves and living our best life means enjoyment in the longer term not just the moment. I don't love cleaning the floor, but my quality of life is sure better when I can walk around the house without worrying about getting cat hair or crumbs or dirt on my feet. I know, a little TMI, too much information, as they say. I too am human. I don't love the treadmill, but I do like being fit enough to do the activities I enjoy and generally feeling better than when I don't exercise. How do I honor and enjoy others? For who they are, not just so they can be like me. Isn't that part of the fun and growth that comes from friendship we're not all alike? What can I do to enjoy or appreciate someone different to me that I may not understand or agree with? Of course, harmony is not always a reality. But if we pursue confrontation or accountability, it better be on behalf of looking toward better harmony all around if we step in to address harm so it can cease, leading to better balance and peace, not just to shake a finger or judge or be mean or establish myself as right. How do I honor and enjoy creation? African cultures traditionally often thank the earth or other creatures for the gifts we receive. They may pause in a hunt before the kill to say to the animal, I see you. And then after to thank it for its life and the nourishment and resources it will provide. This guards against selfish overconsumption or unfeeling exploitation requires a recognition that we're all in relationship with one another and the thriving of all things contributes to my own thriving. I only take what I need and I contribute to the thriving of all because we are all one interconnected world. 
Someone asked me how that applies to the meat case in the supermarket. Well, perhaps that's something we've lost in, indul in industrialized cultures, right? Is a connection with that circle of life, the way things work. So maybe that's a challenge for us this week and beyond. We mindfully and responsibly enjoy creation so that it will continue to provide for us and for our future generations. So friends, there is joy in faithful practice and in right relationships. Celebration and joy are not the same things, but at its best, celebration is an outward expression of inward joy. Just like a sacrament is an outward sign of invisible grace. Our communion today is a celebration. The elements are like a party. Your bread is on a toothpick on a platter like hors d'oeuvres. Your cup is your own glass of juice. The sung settings for liturgy we will celebrate together. God's grace is present and may there be joy in the receiving and in the doing. Amen. Friends, Christ invites to his table all those who seek that to, to, to celebrate that joy and to receive that invisible grace. If that's you this morning, you are welcome as you are. We are welcome as we are. We are also invited not to stay that way, but to let the elements of communion, the grace of God, change us so that we are more and more like Jesus. This is why when we come to the table, we contemplate some prayers of confession, inviting God, the grace of God, to transform us at this table. I invite you to your own reflection as I offer some words of confession. We pause, O oh God, to acknowledge ways we may not have honored you, honored our neighbors, honored ourselves, or honored creation. Forgive us, God, and free us for joyful, faithful living through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. May we find joy in all the ways we choose to respond to God's generous gifts. An invitation in our lives. I invite you to use the next moments of our service to reflect on how God may be inviting you to live out your salvation and inviting you to find joy in living and giving. At this time, the ushers will come forward for those in person. Those of you online may click on the donate button at the top of your screen.
of grace and joy, may our giving this day and our living reflect our desire to be on the path that would be recognized as faithful to the Savior. May these gifts and the way we live this week bring joy to others and to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join in the responsive parts of the great thanksgiving and a note that we will sing the responses if you would like to see the notes you can find them 2257 b c and d in the little black book the words will be on the screen but if you'd like to see the notes for the sung responses 2257 in the faith we sing friends god is ever present with you Turn to the people around you and tell them this news. The peace of Christ is always with you. The peace of Christ is always with you. Listen. The body breathes in and out. As close as breath, the holy is present with us reminding us that there is always room for us, room for all. So we lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Holy Living One because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, for always is when God is with us. We thank you, Creator God, that you formed every one of us, giving us your image the desire for relationship. We thank you, sustainer God, that you are here with us and you sustain us with joy. We thank you, God, for breathing into us the breath of life. Even when we have turned away, you have remained with us, close as breath. And so we open our eyes, our hands, and our hearts to your will for us, as told to us through your prophets. We join our voices together, praising you, along with all who do, have ever done so, and ever will do so, singing together.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time of joy had come when you would save your people. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with joy as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in person and online and on all these gifts of bread and the cup. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, liberated by his life and witness. Be with us, Holy Spirit, and fill us with joy. By your Spirit, we are one with Christ, the host of this table, and one with each other. Let this joy be seen in us outside of this place. It is with great thanks that all God's people sing. The party is prepared. The feast is ready. I invite you to come now. You can come down the center aisle. Uh, you can make two lines. If you need to return to your seats this way, then come down this side and you can return this way. If you need to return to your seats this way, come down this side. You'll receive uh, your piece of bread on your own toothpick. Just grab your toothpick and your own cup of juice. You can receive here. You don't need to wait until you're back in your seat. If you would like to take a seat on the front pew, you're welcome to take your time receiving the elements. If you'd like to spend a moment in prayer at the altar rail, you're welcome to do that and then uh, return to your seats. Come friends, the feast is prepared. If you'd like to receive in your pew, you can stay seated and uh, get Marion's attention and she'll serve you there. Sorry, Raymond. Thanks is offered up 
When you receive hospitality, when you're invited to a celebration and someone shares with you out of the abundance of the table, what do you say? Thank you. Indeed. So let's say together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Also uh, at the party, the leftovers are given to those who come to take home or, or you know, to, to have a bite for the road, as they say. Please feel free. To come up, there is abundant grace of God uh, to take with you, to share with others, or um, to have an afternoon snack later. I don't have my order of service, but I'm pretty sure it is time to sing Sia Humba. You've practiced. You're going to want to probably stand up. Raymond's going to give us a good clip, all right? Choir, you're ready. You've had a practice round last service. You know what? And if it's a faster pace, you can slur the words and no one will know. So it's going to be okay. Stand in body or spirit and let's sing together. Yeah. 
joy to worship with you. I pray that you too are going in joy, with joy. Don't keep it for yourself. That's not fun, right? Go and share that joy with others. No matter how you're feeling today, let joy be a deep abiding presence with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 